Let's take a look at some more of your videos. That's right, we are going to get in and we're gonna tell you, once people click on your videos, how to keep them from not clicking off. We want people to watch your entire video and that's honestly what you want to, to grow further, grow faster on YouTube. Thank you so much for being here. We're gonna get into it in just a second, tell you how it works. But first, let's welcome Jeff. How's it going? Doing well, man, how you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, your first appearance on the video review live stream. Um, after after some some events shook up our team, uh, I didn't know who to call or what to do. So uh, yeah, you're pulling double duty this week. That's right, man. I'm good with it though. I am too. I think I think everyone's gonna be just fine. <laughs> yep. uh, so the way this works is there are two forms in the description below. One of them is for non gaming channels. One of them is for exclusively gaming channels. And the reason we did that is because there's just as many gaming channels here as there are non gaming channels. You'll see what I mean in a bit. Uh, fill those out, fill out the appropriate one, and then uh, sit back and relax. Your channel may not get picked, but that's okay because we're going to be covering so many channels, so many different types of videos today. Just be sure you're taking notes. You're going to learn something you can apply to your own videos. You'll also notice a pinned comment right now talking about Super Chats. We did recently turn those on in our live streams. Everyone's like been super supportive of that. And yesterday we answered a lot of questions that came in from Super Chats. We'll do our best to break away from video reviews once in a while, answer some of your questions. We may not get to all of them, but we're going to try our very best. So yeah, with that, uh, Jeff, should we get started? Yeah, man, sounds good. All right, well, uh, what we did is we have our two forms that I mentioned, and I went and pulled the first person to submit on each of those forms once they were all cleaned up. Uh, by the way, if you did submit last week, we do clean those up every every single week. So uh, if you submitted last week, you'll need to submit again. All right, so the first channel we're taking a look at is CG19, and they have 500 plus subscribers, and they do videos about soccer. Uh, let's take a look at, I like to pick, Jeff, like the the most recent video, unless it looks like a, a weird kind of outlier, like they're trying something. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm trying to get like an average video, like an average sense of what they're doing on the channel. It looks like this one is one of those videos. Although, I mean, you look at the views, we might need to look at a couple of these because these have thousands of views here. So maybe we'll check it out. Maybe we'll see what the difference is between these videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. sure. Let me know if you can't hear it. Oh, it's gonna play ads? No, you're not supposed to do that. Oh man. So I've been having problems with uh, YouTube um, premium whereby I'm getting ads again. I wasn't before. So I don't know what's going oh, on there. I'll have, to, have to look into that. <laughs> All right, here we go. So that's about 30 seconds. Uh, we like to take a look at maybe like the first 30 seconds or so. Are we still invested in what's going on since we clicked on the video? Are we hooked on this content? Uh, what are your initial thoughts? All right, so am I yeah, echoing? Yeah. Oh, you might be. Give me one second. What the heck? That, that's another thing that happens. Every couple of weeks, I have to reshare the screen for some reason. Ah, uh, got it. Yeah, it didn't come up until after we started uh, the screen share. I was like, wait, what the heck? All right, you should be good now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm not hearing it anymore. Perfect. Um, so far, I mean, I liked it. it. It came in pretty dynamic, so I was kind of, uh, kind of got me there, but um, I'm just, I guess they're just showing us and not talking about it, which is kind of an interesting approach. Um, the only thing is I wasn't sure, like, I, I don't know, you, you tell me, did you get a confirmation of your click in, the, in those first couple of seconds? Well, uh, the title is Ultimate Crossbar Football Challenge, and uh, the thumbnail does kind of represent that. They kind of used an arrow. I would, you know, and we could talk about titles and thumbnails a little bit. Uh, we tend to a little bit here and there, but ultimately, yeah, that that's that question of we clicked, did it pay off? I'm thinking no, because the video presented itself as a challenge, and I went into it thinking it was going to be a challenge, but it was never properly explained to me, and that I had that's what I have an issue with. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's, that's one of the things where having that hook really dialed in um, can really help because that's what one of the ways that you can help with um, getting a viewer to stay is letting them know, hey, you've clicked on the right video for the information you're looking for. You know what I mean? And not 
literally telling them that, but basically explaining what the video is going to give them. Um, so interesting. I like, I mean, the approach of taking like the action shots and doing that stuff um, can work well, but I think just a little bit of a tweaking here could, can go a long way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think just just having somebody pop in at the beginning, like today we're doing the crossbar challenge, and here's how it works, and just just getting us like hyped up a little bit, and and giving us those stakes, right? Like, okay, here's here's everybody who's involved, and and here's what you win if you win some, even if it's just a like whoever loses has to buy everyone pizza or something like that, right? Like, just giving us some stakes, and and then then it tells a story whoever loses has to buy pizza whoever gets like the the least amount of points you make up a, uh, an arbitrary point system and then by the end of the video it's you guys all eating pizza and and just kind of like the person who had to pay for it is is getting like you know made fun of a little bit ha 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 and then that like that's the end of your video and it told a complete story while also like presenting this challenge that you wanted to do so yeah. all of those suggestions to re really boil down to a, be a clip at the beginning and the end right so a clip that sets up the challenge and then something at the end that pays it off somehow, like the, the pizza analogy, not analogy, but the pizza um, example I gave. And that would be like that complete story. And the, everything in the middle can stay. You know, I think it was edited well. I think there were good, you know, like, you know, we were both looking at it and thinking, yeah, this is, we're moving at least. Like we're, show, we're seeing different people do different shots. And uh, at least there's that. And there's that exciting music and, and replays and things like that. So there was editing involved. But yeah, th those are ways you can kind of take it up a notch. Yeah, absolutely agree. All right. So that was uh, CG19. I kind of want to see out of these videos, like this one got 4.8 thousand views and it's just recreating football's best goals. And I think the thumbnail is pretty impactful here. Um, let's watch a few seconds of this just to see if there's like a really distinct difference. You know, sure, there's sure. reasons yeah. video spread farther. I'm oh Andrea. my goodness. I'll... For next stream, I will have this fixed, everybody. I do apologize. <laughs> so it's very similar to the other one. I was going to say, is there any footage of some of these goals? And if I fast forward a little bit. Oh, that was, so that was an intro, a branded intro we were watching. Okay, so yeah, you do set it up by showing the, you know, the professional sports league, like, doing its thing, and then your interpretation of it, which is what I was going to suggest. I think your intro in this case was too long. Uh, now that now that I see this again, like, you, you noticed it too, right? Like, the their, their logo kind of comes up at yeah. some point. Yeah, yeah, it took a little long. They could, this hook could have been a bit shorter, um, if anything. Um, it's cool to see though. Like I, I get, I get the cool factor of it. It just dragged on a little long. We have to keep in mind, um, keep in mind the viewers' experience and not wasting their time with a lot of this stuff, especially the branded intro. It's not needed. You really, it really isn't. Just throwing that out. It's really not. Um, but yeah, just getting into it quickly can definitely speed things up. But overall, I mean, the video is performing well. I see the concept. I see why somebody would want to click because you are giving them exactly that. And there, there's some pretty cool curve on the on those kicks. So yeah, I mean, so far it looks pretty good. I can see why people are sticking around for this one. Yeah. What are your thoughts on branded intros? Uh, this is your first time doing the stream. We talk about these every single week. Like when somebody pops up their their channel's name as a way to like inter introduce the content. I know my thoughts on these. What what do you think about these? I think you're going to see a lot of them today. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's like one of these things where, um, because I'm guilty of it myself. I did it for a long time, super long ones too at that. And it's like one of those things where when we're first getting started, we want to like brand ourselves. We want to make sure that it looks professional and all this stuff. The thing is, because we don't know better. And that's the problem with that, right? And we're not thinking about audience retention. We're not thinking about respecting a viewer's time when we're first getting started. So this is completely necessary. If you're thinking about, oh yeah, I need to get on Fiverr and pay somebody to make a branded intro, no. And oh yeah, I gotta pay somebody to, to make a logo, no. You don't. Spend that time not wasting the viewer's time and getting straight into content. Let them know why they clicked and then get into the content as fast as you can. Um, if you can completely bypass an intro and just get right into it quickly, cool, even better, because that can hook people in. So, but yeah, for me, branded intros are very much 2017 and back. And even then they were too old already. So it's just not, it's just not needed. Yeah. Well, you and I feel the same way. <laughs> 
Uh, all right. So next channel is going to be the first gaming channel before we get into random selections. And that's Borderlands Monarchy. Uh, I believe on their forum, they said that they give tips about Borderlands, which uh, is pretty cool. So they're focused on that one game. And uh, why don't we take a look at their latest video? It's, uh, well, let's take a look at five minutes, four minutes, 18 minutes. Let's take a look at the second to latest video. We've got 100 views. It's about the best gun in Borderlands. I think it's a pretty straightforward title. Uh, yeah. So let's check it out. Seems strong. All right, we are starting the second playthrough of Borderlands. We are trying to hunt down that elusive Chimera gun that apparently nobody knows where it is. So we're starting from the very beginning on playthrough number two to see if we can locate that gun. Let's get to it and see what we can find. Hmm. How, how long will the silence continue? There we go. So it was about eight seconds after the initial hook of the video where it just went quiet and uh, our, our host kind of left us hanging and we thought, are they coming back? What's going on? Are they going to keep talking? And no, I am truly on, on this ride with you right now. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the things where we have to be a little bit careful with the dead spots in some of this stuff. Like we could edit that a little bit better to make it more concise, make it a bit more to the point. Um, but yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying though. Cause it's just a bit of dead space in there and just kind of, sometimes it's just not needed, but that's just editing tricks. I mean, I don't think they've been doing this for a super long time. I mean, I'm not saying that they haven't been playing the game. I mean, being on YouTube. So this is just stuff that we start to learn over time, but I, I get what you're saying. It could just be the pacing a little bit that might need a little bit of a tweak. Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely, uh, that that was like the one thing that I got hung up on. And there's other things I could definitely draw attention to. Like, for example, let me just take a look here. Uh, 720. Okay, we are we do have 1080. Uh, let me just play a little bit more. Okay, because I was gonna say the quality looked a little bit low to me. Uh, 1080 sharpened it. It's I can I can read what's on the screen. Uh, so that's definitely good. I think the what what's fundamentally wrong here is, and I've seen this a lot on like gaming channels who do more let's play style content. Now I tell I tell people who do this kind of content like, hey, even if you're going to do like a let's play where people are kind of coming along with you for the ride, you should make a goal for that video. And they did the best gun in Borderlands. Can I find it? So they're they're going to play through Borderlands, but they're looking very specifically for the best gun. So. You're going in with somewhat of a plan, and that's what viewers like. That's why this video at 16 subscribers got you over 100 views in just a week. Like, incredible results right there because you made a clear goal for yourself. Um, we noticed the video after this was just called I Found It, and it had hardly any views by comparison. So, yeah. you know, that that is working for you. So this is why we do the video reviews, right? We talk about titles and thumbnails. We talk about how to pitch your video on Tuesdays. We want you to pitch your videos so that when people see them, they click on them. Wednesdays, we want to make sure that people don't click off. And right now, what I'm seeing is that next step for you. Keep me from clicking off by going into more detail when you make these videos. I get that you're doing a Let's Play. I get that like part of this is real-time reactions to what's happening. But if you watch Let's Plays today from like the top creators, you won't find those dead spots. You will not find a moment where they are not speaking. Or if they stop speaking, it's intentional. It's for comedic effect or yeah. drama, right? So... What we saw there was, this is what we're going to do today. And you made the cardinal mistake of staring at a menu screen while you kind of told us this. The time for saying that stuff and then, like, basically there was an overlap you could have done whereby your character's running to this first loot crate, right? You could have been doing the intro while running towards that first thing rather than sitting in the menu and saying, so today what we're going to do is X, Y, and Z. Like, I want to see you playing the game while you're saying these things, at the very least. I would have, even better, is including some B-roll of this mythical gun that you're looking for, right? Like, to me, like, I don't know what this gun looks like. I don't know anything about it. So I want to see a screenshot of some stats. I want to see a screenshot of the gun. And, and that's just more layers on top of your video. That's just editing techniques that you kind of get used to doing over time. So... A lot of things there could have been made to help retain me as a viewer. And that's what we're trying to do for you right now. Um, 18 minutes long, Jeff. I'm I'm personally worried that there's going to be a lot of points in the video where they go silent. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, that's one thing where anytime like, something like that happens and there isn't anything action that's really mo- progressing this like video forward, they call this kill it, like killing your darlings, right? You have to get in there and you have to be harsh with your edit and you have to be brutal with it and, you know, really start pulling out those dead spots. Anything that's not going to be valuable to the person watching because they don't have to watch you walk every single step from point A to point B. They don't need all that. They can do that themselves. They've done it a million times. So it's more about getting them to that point to, that progresses what you're trying to tell them. So um, that's something you definitely got to get in or do. And if you're kind of wondering at least a little bit about how to find those spots, go into your retention graph, you know, go into your retention graph and see where people are dipping and where they're coming back in. And that'll start giving you some ideas of what parts are driving people to click off or to skip ahead because if they're skipping ahead. That means that this part was not very useful so you can start kind of thinking, keeping that in mind for your next edit. Hey, maybe I should cut this section out because the last time I talked about this, it caused a huge skip. So if you can get those skips out of there, keep people from leaving. Cause I know from what I've seen, maybe you've seen it too. When people skip a section, you know, like 20% of them will dip out, but yep. only 10% of them will come back. Yep. So now you've lost 10% of those viewers. So how can we avoid that? Right. And that's, that's like the reason why my videos are structured in the order that they are in is based on retention graphs. So just something to keep in mind, but that's one of the ways that you want to take a look at that and see um, where where you need to cut out some of that fluff. So retention graph wise, uh, what Jeff's basically referring to is right here. So if I zoom in a little bit, um, this is a not a great example because we had a pretty steady decrease here, but uh, yeah. you can kind of see when people skip ahead by looking. So we see a point here at 67%. And then just a little further up, it goes down to 65. So we've lost a few people between here and here. But it stabilizes. Well, I thought it was going back up. It goes to 64. Dang it. Is there a better example in here? Uh, What you'll see sometimes is, like Jeff said, it'll dip down and come back up 48. Well, we'll find a better example. That's fine. Either way, that's this is what you would do is you would go into videos and you would try and find your retention graphs. Ah. See, these are some interesting moments here. So 69%, 67, 66, 66, 67. So it came back up and there's these different dips. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to click right here. It brings you to that point in the video. You're going to watch, listen for what's being said. What what could have made a few, you know, what could have made me go down a few percentage points in this next couple of seconds here? What happened? And this is why I tell people to disconnect themselves emotionally from their content. Because when you put a lot of emotion into your content and you upload it and it, it does a certain way, it may be hard to do this kind of research. But but maybe wait a little bit. Wait until all this retention data is in there. Wait until you've kind of you know settled down and you're, you've moved on to other videos. You go back and then you you study and you say, okay, like why why might people leave this? You know, don't take it personally. You're just learning. Like there's a reason people skipped ahead. Some of them came back, but some of them did not. And you're trying to make it so these this line. We all want it to be up here all the time. We want it to be 100% of people start watching and it ends with 100% of people still watching. And that'll never happen, but that's that's what we're trying to at least strive for. Yep, I completely agree. You have to get in there and do it. You know, it's not it's not the most glamorous of things, but if you want your videos to perform better, this is the kind of stuff that you have to get accustomed to doing. And some, some of you guys don't want to put in the work and you have to do it. Like it literally is what it's going to take to get you to the next level. How can I improve with every single video? At least 1%, one little thing. Cause a lot of people want to be, I need to improve everything right now. And it gets overwhelming. No, don't do that. Work on one thing at a time. Make your thumbnails a little bit better on this next video. Make your title a little bit better on this next video. Get that retention up a little bit better. Be a little harsher in your edit in the next video, just little things. But when you talk about the span of a few years, those little improvements per video add up to major differences a year later. So it's just got to take your time with it. But it's it's definitely worthwhile doing if you want to take this seriously. And I'm, I'm assuming that if people are watching the stream, they want to take this seriously. Absolutely. Now it's time for this. <laughs> uh, so the claw. the claw is back. It is back. Uh, Jeff, I won't make you perform uh, any claw may, dances. May the, may, the, may the claw be ever in your favor. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
I was I was trying to think of something funny to add to that, but I, I, it's a it's a claw, and there's there's a ball of pit, and I just feel like anything I try and say will will be inappropriate. So, we'll just <laughs> we'll just say, may the claw be in your favor. There are two forms. There is a non gaming form. There is a gaming form, and like I said, they're neck and neck. We got almost as many non gaming channels as we do gaming channels. So what we do is we ask you to use the forms down below, the appropriate form, to submit your channel, and then we come into here. And uh, we update the claw to about, uh, you know, 275. We just we try and get it close, get, but leave a little bit of headroom. Yeah. And then we pick out our first channel and we'll do the gaming form because we just did a non-gaming channel. And it's one. Oh, wait, was it a gaming channel? We was a gaming channel. We'll do the non-gaming channel form. 108. Um, 108. And that's going to be Bonesy the Akuma. He's in the new... Uh, link there too they got their handles they got their their fancy youtube link congratulations nice um so they got two videos right now looks like 10 days ago was their welcome video um so welcome to youtube congrats on your first two uploads uh so we can take a look at your first video um give you some pointers but ultimately our advice if we were in channel at mode would be hey make more videos you know keep going it's all about practice it was nine days since you uploaded a video so you really do want to be uploading as much as possible to to get that practice in uh but hey we'll we'll try and help you out here so we'll watch like the first 30 seconds and we'll we'll chat hello everybody this is bonesy or bonesy the akuma whichever one or just akuma i don't really care welcome to my first vlog on the channel yay <laughs> um, today we're going to be doing Tale of the Dragon, which is a fun little car cruise, which we're going to be doing with my step, with, uh, this car club that we're in. It's a bunch of windy turns and just a whole bunch of fun. It's going to feel like you're on a roller coaster, but in a car. The first 30 seconds, first ever vlog, uh, I'll, I'll go first if you want. Um, my first thing that I'm noticing is that uh, if, you know, you're you're trying out YouTube right now, you're not even sure, do I even want to make content, then totally understand why the Kind Master logo in the corner. Totally get it. But if you're serious about creating, please pay them to get rid of that watermark. <laughs> uh, there are other, are other uh, video editing tools out there as well that are free. Uh, like DaVinci Resolve is one a lot of people like. It's a bit more advanced. You'll need to watch some tutorials. But uh, it, they won't, I believe, watermark your content like that. Um, it's just that... Um, I won't, how do I how do I say this nicely? I guess there is no way to say it nicely. It makes the content look unprofessional. And the, your competition is going to be a step above you in that regard. So it's just kind of an easy bit of advice for me to give you. Uh, but there's definitely some other things as well that I think you should work on over time. Uh, but Jeff, what about you? Yeah, no, no, I completely agree. Um, if you if you do plan on taking this seriously, um, there are free apps to do video editing outside of KineMaster. You've got CapCut. There's a lot of different ones. But uh, aside, uh, that aside, if you do plan on taking this seriously, invest in yourself. You know what I mean? Invest in yourself. Invest in the, in the editing software that you want to use. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about watermarks or any of that stuff. Plus, you unlock the full potential of that software. But congratulations on getting out there, putting your face out there, and and kind of getting this started. This is going to take some time. You know what I mean? There's a lot of room for improvement here. All, all I want you to do right now is, and this is something that I wish somebody would have told me when I was doing my second or working on my third video, come up with your title ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So think of what your title of the video is before you start recording, please. And this, this is for everybody in the chat too, if you're not doing this, because I don't want you guys hustling backwards the way that I was. So come up with that title first. So let's say theoretically um, that my video is going to be a top five video, right? I don't want to, I don't want to make a review about something and then say, oh yeah, it's a top five reasons you should buy this. But in the video, I don't actually talk about five reasons that you should buy this, right? So you want to have that game plan ahead of time. So knowing that title, it'll set, it'll set the pace, the tone and the topics for what you're going to talk about in the video. And even if you have to write down little notes on a piece of paper, keep them in front of you, whatever it is, that way you can kind of stay on track. But I think that's going to be some, some big steps for you to kind of move forward and, and kind of keep this going, especially for vlogs. Cause I know people that vlog and, uh, knowing those titles and knowing what they want to talk about ahead of time is a game changer because it keeps people interested in what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. 
I, yeah, I think just to, after after watching your video, a couple of uh, easy things you can do to help make those incremental improvements throughout your uh, time on YouTube. You don't need to introduce yourself in the way you did. Um, a lot of people will know who you are based on your channel name at the bottom of the screen. So you you kind of introduced yourself three times. First you said Bonesy, then Bonesy the Akuma, then just Akuma. You don't care either way. Sounds like you care because you told us three different ways to say your name, but you don't care. <laughs> so uh, next video, no introduction. Let your channel name do the talking there and get straight into what you're doing. Um, also, a little bit of editing would have gone a long way at the beginning where you where you said, today we're going to be going with, and then you kind of, you were trying to think of, of who was going to be joining you. And so you kind of said a couple different things and like all that stuff could be cut out and it does create some jump cuts, but in terms of vlogging, that's perfectly normal. And, uh, you know, that just kind of shortens up, tightens up your intro. So you keep the focus of your video very clear to the people who are brand new, they've never met you before, and they're clicking on your video for the first time. Uh, so those are just some things you can do for your intro. Of course, throughout your video, be sure you're just keeping up that pace uh, as you get better and better at better at creating content. If you're gonna do a lot of like vlogs where it involves you inside a car, but there's stuff outside you're pointing at, maybe you get a GoPro and you have a, a second camera angle now where you have your camera in the car talking and then sometimes you cut to the GoPro outside because there's something really cool out there uh, that you want to look at. So there's there's all kinds of things you can do to kind of improve. We're not saying you should do that for your next video. Make little changes here and there and, and the ceiling is really unlimited in that regard as to what you can do. But um, yeah, hey, this is awesome. For our first video, 100 views, it's great. Really good stuff. Yeah, far better than should be expected for a channel of this size on their second video. So definitely keep it going. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, congrats on getting started and getting your face out there. It's not easy, man. So you, sh you shout out to every creator that does it. Because I know, I remember exactly what it felt like getting my, you know, trying to get my face out there. It took me three or four videos before I even showed my face on camera. So yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool. They've already taken some really important steps on YouTube. Um, so real quick before we pull out another channel from the claw two things i'm noticing some people oh what are we doing here today we are doing video reviews so you can still get your channels randomly selected but we're going to be focusing more on your video content rather than the surface level stuff the titles the thumbnails and then i'm also seeing some super chats come in so i will grab these when i notice them um thank you so much we'll answer a couple of uh, questions real quick and uh we have Tish from Tennessee asks what is the best editing program i have power director and i like it but it could be complicated and worse glitchy um, I, I mean, we can give our recommendations, but I also saw a whole bunch in chat when we were talking about editors a second ago. So be sure to research the ones that were mentioned, but didn't eventually resolve as one. I use premiere. I like premiere pro. Um, I've used it for years and that's just what I'm comfortable using. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's, it's all comes down to what works best for you. And that's really, there's no, there's no best. So just to be clear, there's no objective best. It's what's best for you as a creator or also what's in your budget to afford because not everything is cheap. Like I just paid for Final Cut, that was 300 bucks. You know what I mean? Thankfully it's a one-time fee, but aside from that, what I was using since um, late, uh, late 2018, early 2019, up until just a few months ago was LumaFusion on my mm -hmm. iPad. And I paid for it when it was on sale. They come up on sale like Black Friday um, for 20 bucks and it's a lifetime license. And I've switched devices with it multiple times and I've never had to pay again. Um, super easy to use and very powerful. Um, but that was what was best for me as a creator. But now that I'm doing a multicam setup, Final Cut works a lot better. Adobe also has the ability to do multicam editing as well. But it really comes down to what you needed to do. If your videos are super simple, you don't need an overly complicated editor. That's that's bottom line, my videos are incredibly simple. Mm -hmm. So using LumaFusion for the past, you know, three years, it was perfect. So don't overcomplicate it. Don't don't break something. Uh, you know, don't don't fix something that's not broken. Um, if you're not making super crazy cinematic, uh, epic uh, videos, then don't don't think too deeply. Just find something that works well for you. It isn't overly expensive, and just kind of rock with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our other question here is from Banana God. Do you like bananas? Uh, yes, but they give me a sore throat, so I don't eat them. Interesting. Yeah, they're a good source of potassium. So, yeah. So thank you for your questions. And uh, we'll head back to The Claw, which will draw a gaming channel now. Number 38 from the gaming forum. Rarely do we see The Claw venture so early into the forum, which is great. Uh, this person does Minecraft tutorials and has over 3,000 subscribers.
All right. It was brown coat, tutorials, and more. Uh, why don't we take a look at their, let's say, maybe their second to last video since it's a little bit longer. Okay. Stock market declines are opportunity. <sighs> Sorry about that. I thought opening up some new channels would make it recognize my premium, but it didn't. So utterly surrounded by mobs in Minecraft that you wish you could call in an airstrike? Well, thanks to Brown Code 67 Weapon Research, you can. Toss down a smoke grenade and run. You got around seven seconds to get 10 blocks away. Otherwise, yeah. Weaponized technology so easy a baby could do it. Just drop, move back, and watch the fun. Warning, constant airstrikes may destroy world. To get started, we're going to have to make some... <laughs> the warning, yes. <laughs> I, hey, man, I'm... Uh, that, for me, the first 30 seconds, it worked. It, it, the only downside, I would say, and it, it immediately came up, was that it was very dark. Yep. And that, I was like, is that just because I'm wearing sunglasses, or was it actually really that dark? But I think it's because it was nighttime in in their in their world when they're recording or whatnot but hook wise all the way up to that 30 second mark where he did the warning i liked it yeah i i loved it i thought this was a really strong start uh definitely some improvements but now i think because we've we've seen some pretty good examples and now i think this is some of the best editing we've seen today uh we can take your content to even the next level so we've been giving advice that it seems like this creator's already utilizing they're telling a story you know, we're, we're getting in and the click is paying off immediately. They didn't introduce themselves. They didn't use a branded intro. They just said what the problem is. And then they said their solution for it and they demonstrated it. We thought doing it at nighttime was not a great choice because it looks bright enough when you're playing Minecraft in real, in real life, like you have it on your computer screen, it looks bright enough. But when you put it through YouTube's processing, this always happens. As someone who used to make Minecraft videos, I can tell you this is a normal thing that happens. So your solutions are one of two things. Uh, record during the day, which means your zombies will burn up because zombies do that when the sun's out. You could find different mobs, though, like creepers and things like that um, to illustrate your point, but still during the day. Or uh, I would say the worst option would be to go into your software that you're editing with and just raise the exposure to to a level that may not look as good, but at least it's still bright, right? So you, you go into your color correction settings and literally crank up your exposure a little bit so that when it gets to YouTube, if it's nighttime, at least it's not like unviewable. Um, but that's that was your intro for us. I think we both kind of felt it. This is almost unwatchable with how dark it is. It's almost as dark as YouTube's border here at the, <laughs> you know, YouTube's own uh, dark mode color scheme. So we want to avoid that. Um, so that that's just a couple of things. And then also, I felt like your editing was great. I felt like you were to the point. Um, but your editing could also have a little bit more polish to it. In that, so when you said warning, um, you know airstrikes may destroy worlds i think this is your wide shot and i think so warning constant use of airstrikes zoom in on one of the points that you're talking about may destroy worlds i see it but it took me a little bit my eyes you you didn't center any of these so my eyes were trying to look at what you were saying and by the time you the joke you know was said i i, I just barely got it you know what i mean so that's when you can use editing to just kind of artificially zoom in on things and uh you know help people kind of draw their attention to what you're talking what you're talking about and then i think the last thing is just music and sound effects um it looks like the mod it seems like you've created this mod maybe you didn't add sound effects to it but adding cartoonishly funny sound effects while the bomb is coming down just for the sake of the video i think would have made it funny like would have just kept people's interest and some music like it was just a very quiet video i couldn't really hear a lot of minecraft noises and i couldn't hear any noises that you added in post so that that was another nitpick. Everything I just said, Jeff, nitpick. Like yeah. stuff that they could do, but don't necessarily need to do uh, because they're still giving value. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. I think it, the, even at the bare minimum was just the darkness of the of the footage was the only thing that bugged me. Aside from that, I was overall very good with it. Now, mind you, I am not the target audience. I don't play Minecraft. So it's one of those things, but it's but the hook worked for me as a viewer. Like I would have stuck around based on what he just said. Um, and the fact that they got a chuckle out of me, even better for retention. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, fantastic channel. Congrats on over 3,000 subscribers. You will be going much farther uh, for sure, especially if you can apply some of these tips to your future videos. Um, great thumbnails, you know, 
awesome awesome to see a minecraft channel starting out so strong yeah they got the 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 the, the fact that they're telling a story the fact that they're hooking you in these are some of the things that a lot of channels need to be paying attention to especially when we see a lot of channels that are just doing let's play like this is the difference like this yep. is this is what we're talking about so um some, somebody to pay attention to so yeah kudos to uh brown coat 67 awesome to see all right let's take a look at the claw now we got uh we've we've gotten to the next stage on our form they're exactly dead even right now uh we'll put this up to 300 of our youtube ad problem because every video this just cannot continue <laughs> for sure for sure um so the first question was from banana uh, frost a lot of banana names in chat today uh are shorter or longer videos better there is no better quote unquote length objectively so your videos need to be as long as they need to be that's really what it comes down to however long it takes for you to convey a message to the viewer that's it so there is no magic number that you have to be under or over there's a lot of myths on youtube around this and i'm sure some of you have probably even heard oh yeah you have to have a video that's over eight minutes long uh, so that it, it performs better it, you know a couple of years ago it used to be, oh, you have to have a video that's more than 10 minutes long for it to perform better. Or your videos have to be under five minutes for them to like really blow up. It's a bunch of nonsense. Your video has to be as long as it needs to be. No more, no less. So that's that's bottom line, bottom line, that's it. So all the other stuff that, that goes along that you'll hear people say, it, it, no, it just needs to be as long as it needs to be, as concise as possible. So basically for me, like I can waffle on about uh, a pair of headphones for 30, 40, 50 minutes, but, but is that really serving the audience? Am I giving them a ton of information in those 30 or 40, 50 minutes? If the answer is yes, cool. If not, if I'm waffling on, I'm going to edit the living crap out of that video. Uh, give me a second. Sure. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. I can't click on them myself. All right. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's all right. It's all right. I'm I'm dealing with uh, different stuff in the background that I can't. I know now I'm like pulled out of the stream completely. Thank you for, for watching today. But though uh, the uh, forms are down below for you to fill out. Yep, of course, man. Let's see here. I think. Oh, hold on. I can see one. So uh, we had another one that came in from uh, Azzy Taylor, and it says I haven't started yet, but thinking about making a gaming first impressions and review channel, but not sure if it's a good idea. So, well, the only way to know if it's a good idea is to try it. That's really what it comes down to. And I think one of the things that you'll take away from both myself and Dan is that hopefully one, you're going to focus on, uh, games that are popular. Um, but being that you're going to be doing reviews, it, it sounds like you're going to want to be reviewing a bunch of different games. This is where you're going to have to be careful because I would strongly recommend if you're going to be doing different games, try to keep them in the same um genre of games like if you're gonna be doing racing games just do all racing games or automotive games or whatever if you're gonna be doing sports games keep it you know on sports games um shooting games keep it as shooting games but you have to that, that would be the only thing try to niche into that target audience think about that think about who are these videos aimed at because if you're gonna have a video about madden and then a video about uh you know forza and then a video about fortnite it's like these are completely different people playing these games so um try to focus at least on a genre of games if you're going to go that route we got two more questions and then we will go back to drawing channels at random the next one is from mornings with heather is 25 subscribers after three months considered good growth or is it slower than usual i would it, say that you need to have a mindset shift around this Yes. And for, and this goes for everybody here, because one thing that we always see, and this is one thing that, that is a, a plague amongst new creators and, and smaller creators is this focus on subscribers. I get it. Like I get, you want to get to that thousand. I, I understand that, but subscribers are nowhere near as valuable as you think they are. They're, they're, that should not be the number one thing in your mind, making better content and getting people to watch those videos, essentially views far more important than subscribers far more. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be worried about that so much Is 25 subscribers after three months considered good growth. I don't know. It depends on the niche. There's too many variables to answer that question. So, and everybody grows at different paces. So, you know, like if I remember correctly, Travis hit 10,000 subscribers in his first year, yep. my first year, 800 ish. So something to think about, but it's different for everyone. 
Yeah, I don't I don't even remember how long it took me when I first started on YouTube, but I can tell you like when I once I like had learned a lot and I started a new channel, it it took me I think 6 months to get my that next channel's like 10 that first 10,000 subscribers. So it it's going to be different for everybody. It just depends on so 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 many factors and we don't want you fixated on your subscriber count in general, right? Like the subscriber count is this vanity metric. It's really cool to see that number go up, but think about subscribers this way. Somebody clicks that button, just like they click the like button on a video, right? When someone clicks the like button on your video, they don't go back and retract it. There's never a point where they're like, gosh, I've liked a lot of videos lately. And they go back through and start unliking videos. It's the same for subscriptions. They subscribe in that same exact impulsive moment of like, yeah, I might watch more of this. And then they may never again, they might watch more. They might watch some and then leave in the future. And you'll still keep them as a subscriber. So it's a metric that doesn't really tell anyone anything. And even when you get larger, brands that sponsor you won't even look at the subscriber account and not a savvy brand anyway they will understand that all that matters is how you're doing today how many views do your, does your do your videos get uh are are you growing is you, are you retaining an audience and do you speak to their audience can they work with you so yeah that's that's everything i think <laughs> about subscribers in a nutshell that we tend to say yeah and then last question before we get back into random selections here from don't trip figured out how to get short thumbnails you want instead of random generated generated thumbnails would like to collab on sharing this with you i submitted thank you for submitting on the form um yeah be interesting thing there's uh that's not necessarily a collab opportunity i don't think but uh you know if you want to share that you can feel free to tweet at us let us know and uh, yeah good yep. luck to you for sure all right so uh, we have a lot of channels that have submitted on the form, and uh, there's also more Super Chats we'll get to later, so thank you so much. Um, all right, what did we look at last? Was it gaming or non-gaming? It was non-gaming, right? So now it's going to be a gaming channel, Yep. which we're over 300 now. Look at this, the form, it's growing so fast. 38 on the non-gaming channel, 138 is gaming sorry i already said this one three <laughs> it's all good dude i i already went through this and they say they're an animation channel but they submit mm. on the gaming form so if you're submitting on the wrong form keep in mind that you won't get audited or reviewed in this case are they are they making games is that what's I, happening or are they showing animations of games i don't know I'm a little confused, and that's not good. This is definitely a game. Excuse me. Um, 100 days in one mini game. So that's about 20 seconds. I don't think we're going to get a commentator or anything. Um, I have thoughts, but you know what? The videos for 30,000 subscribers, I would say, you know, a few thousand views is not terrible. Uh, this, this content is appealing to somebody. Right. It's just I'm definitely not the audience for it. Right. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm also kind of uh, bugged out by the uh, watermark through yeah. the video. Like, I get wanting to have that, like, level of security on your stuff. But this is a trip. Are people really stealing your, your videos like that to where that has to be there? Um, but yeah, this is kind of interesting. So I'm not sure if this is because it shows, I mean, this shows gameplay of a game. So I guess it's a gaming channel, right? I'm, I'm assuming. It does seem like it is a gaming channel. Yeah. But I'm not, yeah, I'm definitely not seeing the, uh, the why. Yeah. Literally, that's exactly what I was thinking too is, what am I as a viewer getting out of this? Right? Like what's, right. what's going on? Yeah. Why, why, why should I continue watching this aside from wanting to watch somebody play a game? Mm -hmm. So that is, that is a concern. There's also um, a subscribe call to action that pops up. Uh, we tend to say like, you, you may want not want to do these uh, until like you've offered some kind of value. I think right now, I'm watching this horror game and like there's this intensity that's kind of building up even though there's no one talking the more I watch it the more I'm like something's about to happen right like it just keeps going and something's about to happen this pulls me out this like kills my immersion 
you know, and I think if that's what this content is supposed to be, like people who are getting immersed in it, people who are like, they don't want to click off because they want to see what's going to happen. Little interruptions like this are going to pull them out of the content. It's almost a reminder that, oh, oh, I don't really, you know, I'm watching a video. I can stop at any point. But yeah, agreed. Just a nitpick there. We can look at one more. Um, that was, let's see, three months ago since they've posted. So they haven't posted in quite a while. And uh, I want to see, let's see, this video got 5,000 views. We'll watch just for a little bit. So is this a loading screen? Yeah, I think I think the videos are just going to be like this, where, where they're silent and it's kind of up to us to just kind of watch you know, and experience it without, without the help of a host or anything like that. Yeah. I think you're, I think you're on the money for that one. And I'm not sure if this is a, if this is a game that they created or, or if this is I just think a it's game a, that exists. I think it's around. Uh, I, I think huggy wuggy is like a thing, but, uh, a uh, poppy, a uh, poppy playtime. Is that what it is? The game under the, oh, the right, right. The name of the channel I'm sorry, is huggy wuggy. Yeah. Poppy yeah. playtime. I, I feel like this isn't the first time I've seen this. Right. But I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It, here's the thing. Like when it, when we find channels like this that are, you know, relatively speaking, doing well for their size when they upload, uh, but they're they're coming to us looking for some advice. You know, we kind of think it's it's a matter in this case of just not having done a video in three months. If If you're making content that's responding to an audience and you're enjoying yourself, then yeah, like, cause the advice I want to give would be counter to what this person's doing. And I don't know if I can be helpful in that way. Yeah. yeah I, I think no, they should I, continue doing what's working. Yeah, no, no, for sure. And then consistency. And I know animation could take time. If that's what you're doing, we know animation can take time, but consistency is going to help because I I've seen it way too many times. I've had a lot of, I've had many a channels and conversations with where they put up 30, 40 videos and then they're like, Hey, where's my subscribers? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, it takes a little bit more than that. You haven't uploaded in eight months. So um, there's a thing about consistency. There's a thing about momentum on YouTube. Um, so definitely kind of getting that back um, back in your court, getting back into the game and back into uh, putting out these videos. And then hopefully finding a way of delivering value um, beyond just showing something. You know what I mean? Th that can work. I'm not saying it can't. But if you if you continue doing the same thing and it's not working, then it might be time to change something. Yeah. Um, and then you did respond. We were kind of confused. It was animation. Plus, I made my game. It does not exist. Okay. Interesting. So you made this game. It's It sounds like. And you used to do animation, but you've pivoted to gaming. Look at this. I mean, 248,000 views. We're not doing channel audits today, but yeah, there's there's a lot of very interesting things here. So I would say what you are is a game dev channel. Um, you're not an animation channel. That much is clear. Even though animation is a skill set used, you're using it to create games and then make videos about those games. Um, probably is a way to get a lot of people to play them. I could definitely see the appeal to this game. I think there's something here in terms of like, the types of games, especially in the horror genre that are trending right now. I, I think this has a really unique like art style. Um, I, so there's a lot, there's a lot here in your corner. It's just a matter of leveraging, you know, your, your game dev talents on YouTube. And there's other channels that are, that set great examples for this out there. Um, just game dev channels in general. But I, I think it would help to kind of like tell that story, you know, um, be some, be on the mic, you know, to get people even more invested. Uh, but definitely look and see what was going on four months ago. You have 2.5 million views right here. I mean. That's that's a lot. I also can't read the text through your watermark uh, in your content. That's another issue with the watermark, too. Uh, you will play with and then yeah i'm i don't know i'm a bit i'm a bit confused by that yeah yeah same i mean hey, if it works for the target audience then cool um but yeah 
<laughs> so I see. Okay, so this is why I wanted to add a section to our form where they ask us like specifically like what can we help with? Um or like what what would you like help with? So what they really want is to get back to where they were here. But there's too many there's too many factors for us to kind of like parse through to understand why you were here. You have your stats and we don't. Um, so it, we would tell you to go in and try and learn like what what is it about these games these are these videos that really resonated with people like 2.5 million views I imagine is probably your most popular video yeah. yeah and so getting back to this which was just five months ago it, were you promoting it anywhere else like what, you know what was what might have been going on was this was a trending topic helping yeah, push this that's what I was gonna say timing could be can play a big role in that too where something now you know four months later is not as popular as it was then so there's sometimes there isn't anything you can do to get those views back unless you can find another trending topic around this game at this time um so sometimes it can come back sometimes it may it may not this is just the way that it works yeah uh, hey like one thing i'm noticing is whenever you have a thumbnail with this purple background and uh you know like the just some text on it like those videos seem to perform way better, not in every single case, but like in a lot of cases, like 17,000 views. And then you kind of dip down a little bit and then we get back 13,000 views. And again, like it's, I think it comes down to good thumbnails. Does it have to have the purple background? No, but the the split screen thumbnail is always a good one with uh, the arrow, you know, going from one to the other. Like that always works out pretty well. I like I would keep playing like this discord one doesn't really tell me anything 100 X Daisy doesn't really tell me anything I don't know what that is uh, so can continue thinking about viewers who have never seen your stuff before and how can you appeal to them and I would go out and look for other game dev channels and see what they're doing to to do just that because there are some examples there's some extreme examples that I can show you but I don't know if they'd be super helpful like um, Annie for example I think it's uploaded in quite some time they made this uh, squid game knockoff and these are these are shot like they're vlogs almost they just kind of tell the story of this game coming together and and you know they're very funny and like it's him testing it out with his friends and uh you know maybe there's some opportunities in there if you were to kind of um you know try to try to find a new way to frame your content um but it, that's based on like a trending topic too I, I think there's something here i think that not only is there something here with the game you're creating but i think there's something here with the channel as well but it's going to take some time to kind of hone that strategy Yep, I agree. And I think one of the things that's going to need to happen, though, is getting back on the ball. Mm -hmm. Can't get around that. So best of luck. This is a great start. Don't be discouraged. Um, sometimes, like, we we had somebody who was watching our streams for a while named Jonk. They, they still come around once in a while. Um, who blew up covering a very trending topic. They were, they were just making videos, making videos, making videos. One day, one of them took off. And they got this huge spike. And then whenever they covered that topic for the next few weeks... Those are the only videos that really took off for them. But when the dust settled and they were back down to like normal numbers, right? They weren't covering those trending topics anymore because there's just nothing left to say. They were left with thousands of viewers, whereas they only had hundreds before the trending topic blew up their channel. So you still gain something from it. You got 2 million views and then you got hundreds of thousands and then it trickled down to tens of thousands and now you're down to just thousands. But what did you have before you blew up? And, and you want to compare it in that way. You want to zoom way out and go, well, look, this was still progress. How can I blow up again? Maybe it's not a matter of blowing up again. Maybe it's a matter of just now making these incremental improvements. Maybe you just got really, really lucky, which happens on YouTube a lot. You get really lucky, and then sometimes it's just the perfect set of circumstances that you will never be able to replicate. You know, And you'll just have to continue making content and learning as much as you can. I don't want to talk forever about it, but uh, it's just a really interesting channel. No, for sure. All right. All right, Claw. We got to update you. 375. Non-gaming form number 81. Still sticking to the earlier sections of the form here. All right. Let's check it out. It's a drawing channel. They have over a thousand subscribers. Cool. I want to just see the most popular videos real quick. Okay. We're not doing channel lots. Just curious. Uh, let's check out the latest video where you're drawing in a comic book style.
So that's the first 30 seconds. Uh, Jeff, did our click pay off? So, so far, so good for me in that sense. If I was looking to, to see what the drawing process would look like, in that sense, yes. I don't know if at any point they're going to talk about this to explain these concepts of why they're doing things this way. Because one thing to show you, and that, that works too, some people are very visual, but sometimes it's also worth, like at least for me personally, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you drawing this way? Why did you start with this part? Why, you know, explain to me what that is, right? What are those steps? So um, this just could be a matter of reframing the structure of the title of the video, like, you know, um, explaining or my drawing process explained. And then you kind of go through step by step explaining why you go through this. And as a new artist, why this would be a good move for me to, to kind of take this process on. Um, but that's the only thing for me. But aside from that, I mean, it is showing it. So I am... You know, we are getting what we clicked on. Um, I'm just not getting any explanation, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. There, there's something that I was expecting too in that in that same regard because it's about your drawing process. I guess I was just kind of wanting to be talked through it a little bit um, because it seems like you're going through it at a speed at which, even though it's a quick video, I think I could still follow it a little bit. You know, if I wanted to try and like improve my skills as an artist, I think I could follow this. But I would love it if you were explain the method to your madness you know if, if you were just there to kind of walk us through it and it doesn't seem like it's ever because it hasn't happened in 30 seconds i don't think it's going to happen later in the video uh if it does that's a mistake too because it that's going to be jarring then you know like oh oh now we're going to talk i i think that should it should start like that but my sense is it's not going to come into play uh i'll, I'll say this uh, in terms of uh you know art channels and stuff uh, I, I think I think your drawings are killer. Like they're really good, uh, but you gotta also pay attention to the fact that uh, some of your thumbnails here are are pitching your videos a little bit better than others. So, for example, you have a side by side here, and this is the kind of thing I would expect to see if you're gonna draw like a comic book character, like you've you know before and then after meeting your version. I, I think that's a very clear way to tell that story. But not only did did we not do that here because it's a different type of video but we don't know what character you're drawing. You know, there's so that, that trendiness of like a character that's recognizable to people is gone. And when you're starting out in the space, I think it's really important that you do more things like Batman, for example, you're doing things that people can recognize right away. And uh, I think that might've been holding this video back a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Le uh, leveraging that when possible makes a lot of sense. Like even where he's doing drawing Jim Lee's X-Men cover. I know what the, I know what that is. Like I have that comic book. So I know what that is. But to um, a regular viewer, they may not know. They may not know and where who Jim Lee was. You know what I mean? But they, all, they may know who Cyclops is. So that might have been a better move, you know, around titling, around kind of showing what that was. Um, but still, though. Let's see. Yeah, interesting. I like how they're doing it. They're doing, a, they're doing their own variation of it. They're kind of going through a time lapse of it, which is nice. And, and this isn't too much different than the than the drawing process video, which is why I brought that up. I still think you could have pitched your drawing process video as you did this one, which got double the views, right? Like you're going to draw a popular character, but you're just going to do it a little bit differently. Now you're going to go through your drawing process. You're going to slow it down a little bit. You're not going to do as much of this time lapse stuff so people can kind of follow along a little bit easier. Yeah. And the better thumbnail helps too. Like it's yeah. very clear. Jim Lee, me, like... You know, that's, it's a very, very clear proposition there as well. So there's no confusion. Yeah. Uh, and as far as the actual video content though, you're doing a really good job. I think taking your camera and your edits and like doing stuff with them. It's not just a static image. Like you zoom in on different parts of the content. Like you're, you're really kind of like doing, I think a really good job, um, with, with your edits. And if, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna talk, I think you've picked some nice music, and at least it's you know chill and and all that's kind of working, which is nice. What's the ending like? Yeah, let's see if we fast forward to the end here. So it is like a static end screen, and it, I would say it goes on a bit too long. So that's where it stops. Two o eight and two twenty seven is when the video ends. So yeah, we got like a full 20 seconds. YouTube will let you make your end screens up to 20 seconds long. Doesn't mean you have to use that. <laughs> Thank <I> mean, you. <laughs> you can you can make it as short as five seconds. 
uh, in terms of the actual clickable end screen element. I think it's five seconds is the shortest. I could be wrong. It could be even less. Um, like this is going to kill your retention. Like it just drags that percentage down. Once people realize the video's over and they click off, but there's 20 seconds left of only a two minute, two and a half minute video, that's going to really harm that, re that percentage of people that we looked at earlier. So try to keep it even shorter. And if you do decide to add yourself to the content, if you're talking, then you can give people a, a even more clear reason as to why to watch the next video. So the video is not doing all the heavy lifting. You can say, you know, I drew these same characters in a video on the screen now, you know, and then you kind of have people, oh, okay, I'll go watch that. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Keep it shorter. That's really what sometimes it can, it can help in that sense because you don't want people just sitting there forever. Uh, I think mine at max show for the last like, 10 sets like seven to 10 seconds of at the end of my video at, at most so because i try to keep it very very short so yeah thank you for your super chats by the way uh, i've been starring those in the background we'll answer a couple of questions real quick before pulling our next channel sure the first one is going to be zethrom gaming following trends through your niche a good idea absolutely yeah absolutely I think, the, I think about it like this are you trying to create traffic or would you rather take advantage of a wave of traffic that's already happening? Right? Yeah. So definitely, definitely doing this is a good idea. Yep. Um, I didn't know what they meant by through your niche, but uh, I think you're right. I think that's your, I think the way you've interpreted that. Um, going crazy in the kitchen. Thank you for the super sticker. Much appreciated. Uh, Loot station. How can I get sponsors? I have no idea how that works. Ooh. Great question. Yeah, no, it definitely is. I mean, reaching out. So basically, just like Viper likes to say, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So reaching out to them is super, super important. Um, but an excellent resource for this would be uh, my my buddy, Justin Moore. Uh, his channel is called Creator Wizard. I would definitely look, look him up. Um, he has amazing, amazing free content all around sponsorships on his own YouTube channel. Um, but, and if y'all ever want to consult with him, you, you can do that as well. Um, but definitely check out his channel. It's called creator wizard. His name is Justin Moore, more with two O's, uh, definitely somebody to check out around sponsors. Mm -hmm. Uh, just watch out for scams too. As your channel grows, you will get emails and, uh, sometimes they're legit. A lot of times they are not, and they're just trying to grab your personal information. So just be very, very aware that there are some bad actors out there. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, another super sticker here from Let's Create Unity Games. Thank you so much. Uh, and then we have one, uh, I'm not sure how to say that name, but uh, what is a good free thumbnail creator? I use Pixlr. Oh, a lot of people use Canva, right? Yeah, that's, I was gonna say Canva, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much the gold standard. Um, GIMP is another option. Um, aside from that, it just depends on the types of thumbnails you make. Some of them can be super, if it's like super simple, you have Snapseed. I know a ton of creators that use Google Snapseed. Um, it's an app that's available on iOS and Android. Um, it can you can add text onto the thumbnail. You can you know fix up the picture to make it look a lot better. So Snapseed is a very entry level app that you can use as well. So you do have some good options. Uh, and then we have one here from Dark Mobian. I think I recently started putting different game on my channel. It's still Roblox, but uh, related. But my first video did really well. My second did not. Any advice as a tower defense sim? So it's always about keeping your audience in mind. Uh, you can pivot games. If you're going Roblox to Roblox is interesting because Roblox is a gaming platform. So it's always like the same ecosystem, but different games are being created within it. So that's an easy pivot, but tower defense game is a lot different than say like a pet simulator game where you're collecting pets and stuff, which is like something you can do. So it really, like if you were playing a tower sim and you're going from tower sim to tower sim or tower defense, I keep saying sim, if you're playing tower defense and going from that to that, that'd be like a super easy pivot. Um, if you're, if you're playing like a cozy game that doesn't have any combat in it whatsoever, and then you're going to a game that is combat, like really think about that audience is, are, are those, is there a lot of overlap there? No matter what you do, you can go from tower defense to tower defense and still lose people because that's just how it is when you pivot. But, uh, is there enough overlap so that damage doesn't hurt too much? And even if there's not a ton of overlap, but it's like, this is what I'm passionate about now. This is what I'm going to do. Then it's time to accept the fact that you will lose some viewers, but the loss could equal gains in the future. If you're even more excited about this new game, if it's even more trendy and you know, you're having fun, your audience is having fun. Like you, you can work that back up. You know, you're just gonna have to accept the, the, the peaks and the troughs there. 
Yeah, pivots always have an inherent level of risk when you're going to something completely different and you're targeting a different viewer. Mm -hmm. So, because gaming, not all gaming is created equal. Right. And you have to be, you have to accept that. And if you want to do something different on your channel, then you have to accept that you're going to have to work a little bit harder and you might have to have some rough, you might have to go through a rough patch. I know plenty of channels that have done a pivot and had to go through a long rough patch until they built up the audience of their new viewers and that took over the old viewers. So it takes time, but it's worth yep. it. Every year we do a, a video, how to start a gaming channel, enter year number here. So it'll be 2023 this year. And uh, I this year I've been doing a lot of research on pivoting a gaming channel, pivoting existing one. Because when I came here, my advice was don't play other games. Make your channel about one game. Worry about pivoting when you, when you get to be larger. Well, now I'd like to think that a lot of those creators have gotten larger. And I'd like to also think that I've learned a lot too. So I've been trying to figure out like, what is the best advice for pivoting? And in a nutshell, I'll go deeper on, in that video, but in a nutshell, I would say commit to the pivot. That's my biggest advice for you. If you're going to pivot your channel and you're, you feel like I don't need to make a new channel. This is similar enough for me because that's the other advice. You could just make a new channel if it's going to be way different than what you were doing before. But if you're going from gaming to gaming, right? Commit to it. You're going to lose viewers. You're, right now you're getting, you're used to a certain level of success on YouTube because you're getting a certain amount of views. You're going to pivot that content. A number of those people are not going to pivot with you. Accept it. Move on. Commit to the pivot. Just go all in. And it's hugely demotivating to see numbers that were once here go down to here. You, you'll never shake it. I, I feel it myself. I've been testing out pivots myself. It hurts. It's like I was getting this and now I'm getting this. This is not good but commit to it, relax, try and pull yourself out of it, pretend you're starting a new channel and just keep uploading because you're going to attract new viewers in this audience that you're going for now. You've basically, you haven't just pivoted games, you've pivoted audiences, you've pivoted your attention to somebody else. So you're going to have to let them find you. Yep. Takes time and commitment. Two videos is not enough to judge. Right. Straight up. Uh, we have uh, a couple more questions here that are just coming in, and we'll get to the next uh, randomly selected oh, channel. I like this one. Yes, do live streams count towards public watch time? Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong. I think they do once they're a VOD. Correct. But yeah, no, but they still do, though, either way. So okay. it's one of the things where we've been doing that as not a hack, but uh, a way for smaller channels to build up their public watch hours is to have them live stream. So, um, especially during, uh, while they're live. So put it like this, let's say you had 10 people watching you stream for an hour, right? You're going to get 10 watch hours out of that. So, and it multiplies the more people you get. And then uh, in addition to this, right? The other benefit of it, one, by streaming regularly, you're going to get better on camera. You're going to be able to improvise better. You're going to be able to talk quicker in a sense, you know, you're going to be able to get your messages out there a lot easier. Um, but also you get consistent, you'll start building up a consistent audience who will show up when you drop actual videos. So it, it it's beneficial in multiple ways to you as a creator. For your channel, it helps. Watch hours, it helps. But it also helps you become a better creator because you learn how to speak on camera. So it's definitely worth doing. If you have the ability to do it, to, to live stream, pick a time, pick a day, and make it work for you. Um, and I strongly recommend, it takes time to build up to that level, but um, strongly recommend doing it for minimum of an hour. You know, that's that's 100%. You wanna do that for at least an hour. And then uh, one more before we go on. There are more questions, but uh, this will be the last one before we go to the next channel. We'll come back to your questions. Uh, if you're doing live streams, like just playing a game and doing a playthrough, do you talk on your live stream or not? Uh, I, would, I, I would. I would talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Live streams are a really great opportunity to connect with your audience, to to talk to them in a way they don't normally get to hear you, especially if you're scripted. If you do scripted content and then you do an unscripted live stream, that's a really good way to break that barrier and like let people really get to know who you are. It may, it takes your viewers and turns them into fans, in my opinion. I, I think I think it really can. Um, let me ask you this: if if we did our live stream where we were reviewing videos and we weren't talking, but we were just watching the videos. And then moving on to the next videos, would that do anything for anybody? Like, if we know what we know what advice we would give, but we're just not going to share it because we know microphones. You know that that wouldn't really be helpful. You know, it's the same with gaming. If they're just going to watch you play a game silently, they could just watch a trailer for it and learn if they want to play it themselves or not, and then buy it and enjoy it themselves silently. Thank you. Gaming on YouTube is about that extra level of connection, that, that feeling like they're in the room with you, watching you play this game, um, and there's something to that. So. 
yes, it's absolutely crucial that you you talk. If you go to a live stream and it's silent or it's just game music or whatever, it's gonna be it's gonna feel a little bit weird. Like ask yourselves, how often do you watch live streams like that? Maybe there's a couple of you. Maybe there's like a specific case for it, but I would argue that most people expect somebody on the mic, you know, in that gaming live stream. Yeah, the, the, I think about the odd the potential audience being this big of people who want to watch that. Or if you talk and make it entertaining, that audience expands out. So yeah. just something to think about. But it, it, it's it's one of those things where the easier the content and the lower the barrier to entry, the more people that are doing it, the higher the competition. And it, that's why a lot of those channels struggle. So yep. you got to take it a few steps further and put in more effort if you want to get more out of it. Yeah, barrier to entry is a, a thing that I feel like we talk about a little bit, but not quite enough. Um, barrier to entry, meaning that your content, how easy it is for someone to do what you're doing. Yep. That what's the barrier to entry? How like playing a free game versus a game that's $60? What's the barrier to entry? Well, it's $60, first of all. And then it's whatever goes into streaming that game. So always be considering that barrier to entry when when thinking about like, okay, is anyone even going to watch this or how much competition do I have? Like there's, it, it comes in so many different ways. All right. Hold on. Where are we on the gaming forum? 382. We're already, we've already surpassed the claw again. We're going to pick out number five on the gaming forum way early. The claw is feeling generous to people who submitted early. Linkston. Looks like they're doing uh, some Ocarina of Time. Oh, sweet. I like these thumbnails. Uh, let's take a look at the latest video. It looks like all their videos are over a half hour long, so this is this would represent an average video for them. Let me let me rewind. It's very quiet. Hello and welcome back, everybody. My name is Blinkston. We're here to play some games. Now, of course, when we last left off, we got strange so today. No preamble, nothing. We were starting off in the Dongo's Cavern. Let's just, just get straight into it. I got nothing to say. You got nothing to say? No, I got nothing to say. Not me. Uh, right there. Uh, there's a there's a charm here. There's an energy. Uh, so we're thirty seconds in. Um, my first bit of advice before we get to Jeff is, in your editing software take your volume and, and get it up. Just just go in and artificially raise that. It's probably fine the way it's going into your headset mic, but it's way too quiet. I've cranked it all the way up. I'm wearing headphones. Usually like when I crank it all the way up on YouTube, it blows me away. I, I have to like listen so hard to hear what you're saying. So there's not a lot I can do to make this content listenable. And I have to imagine anyone watching on like a phone who turns it up all the way and they're wearing headphones, then maybe they hear you, but they go to their next video and they blow out their eardrums because they forgot they had to turn their volume all the way up for you. Like, just be sure to raise that to the appropriate level. I think minus 12 on your meter if you were using your software and like kind of looking to see where it was, like that'd be a comfortable level. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, so this goes into the fact that audio is arguably much more important than video and what you're showing on the screen. And if I can't hear what you're saying, then we have a problem. And at first I thought the sound was out and I was like, wait a minute, is the sound out? But it's just that it's super, super quiet. So um, definitely listen to what Dan is telling you here and make those adjustments, um, you know, po in your post, um, get that turned up. Because if it's too quiet, it's just not going to work. And you're essentially, you're shooting yourself in the foot. As soon as somebody clicks in and they can barely hear it, they're going to click out. And your video never is never going to stand a chance at, at doing anything because people are leaving immediately. Let's say it's still the most valuable video, the most awesome video on the Ocarina of Time, but they can't hear you. Yeah. So you're, you're literally shooting yourself in the foot. So that's one of the things where we want to make sure we're getting that, um, getting that down pat. So hopefully... Um, hopefully moving forward, you can make sure that that sounds good. It's going to take some experimentation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, record some really short clips. You can upload them, let them process, go through the whole thing and then watch them back on YouTube. You can have them unlisted. This is literally what I did to make sure that my stuff sounded good on the other side. So it takes a little bit of work and experimentation, but it's going to be worth it in the end for a better viewing experience. And that way your videos will at least have a chance. Yeah. If you start turning up the volume in post too, and you're noticing a lot of hissing noise and stuff like that, uh, you want to go back into your settings and your computer, like really play with your volume, try and figure out what's going on there. But uh, 
you know, do some recording tests to get that. As we're talking about audio, my cat bumps my mic cord, which is not in great shape. <laughs> Sorry about that noise. Um, so yeah, get, get that audio figured out. That's going to be, like we said, half a video. Um, other than that, I, there was the problem I had for those who, for those who couldn't hear it. Uh, one of the things they said was, were like the video started off really high energy. They were like, all right, let, we're here to play some games. And it, it seemed like we were getting you at your, your, cranked up to 10 excitement level for what you were about to do and then when you got into it you said all right we'll just start i got nothing to say you got anything to say like i get maybe you're trying to be a little bit funny but i do look at the timestamp on the video i see that it's 45 minutes long and in the first 30 seconds you told me you don't have anything to say and i'm a bit concerned now as the viewer now i'm thinking well hang on if you don't have anything to say and you're playing this game that is many years old at this point is there any reason for me to watch, you know, and I'm sure you're going to add commentary throughout. It's not that it's going to be a silent film or anything, but I'm worried about the quality of that commentary because you, you didn't seem to plan your intro and then you recorded for 45 minutes. And I'm, I, I'm worried how much of this is edited too. Did you cut out any like of the most like mundane parts? I don't really know. Uh, so I think your views here are reflected in this. Uh, there, there are some views, but let me just look at this. Let me just keep scrolling and see 40 minute videos. I would say you're putting a lot into this content. You're pedaling really hard and you're, you're improving your thumbnails. I think, uh, I think these thumbnails that you've done lately are an improvement even just from a month ago. Uh, I, I like the, the animated eyes and the like literally burning money. So it's, it's not, it's not like you're just trying to say, Oh, of time episode 12. Like you've taken out the episode numbers, even though it's like a concurrent let's play series. I love all that. But what, what's missing here for me is like, I think, I think when you compare this to other people who are playing these games, like through, you're looking at 10 minute videos versus 45 minute videos. And you're looking at really high quality edits. You're looking at like really a lot of footage that was cut out. So it was the only the best of the best parts. Um, and, and I feel like you left too much in here. I think it's just way, way, way too long. Based on the 30 seconds I've seen, I would have clicked off purely because I'm worried the whole video is going to be like this, where it's going to be a, a very little substance in terms of you, the creator, like adding to the video game that we're going to watch. We can skip forward maybe a couple minutes and just kind of see if that plays out. What was that? I'm off my game. We're just waiting for it. Hey, listen. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Find a face. Okay, so I need to blow up these. Can I reach him? I hope I can. So, huh. I think it's playing out, Jeff. I think it's it's very quiet, and I don't just mean because of the volume. I mean, it's quiet because we're just kind of like with them experiencing a green of time. Yep. Yeah. And there, there's got to be more to it than that, especially yeah. when playing these classic games. Uh, when you look at Ocarina of Time today and you see what people are doing, I don't know how much regular old Ocarina of Time Let's Play is out there. I know there's speed running, though. I know that that's like a thing that's popular with this game. I don't know everything when it comes to this game. But I know that that's one area. So, are is there anyone making the kind of content that you would like to make? If you're not, if you're, you're like, I don't want to speed run, but I just want to play through Ocarina of Time. Who are the people doing that today? Who are like really successful? And if you can find a couple of them, what are the things that are they're doing that you're not doing that you could get better at? If you can't find any, what you're looking at is content with a very low ceiling. And when I say low ceiling, I mean you can only hope to get so many views, so many subscribers before you basically get everybody in the in the room who wants to watch it the room being youtube so you don't really want to be in a space with a low 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 ceiling it can help there's certainly people who have done that and actually started whole businesses because they were just the best at their craft and you know it, it's out there but I, I would say in gaming that's not where you want to be so those are kind of my tips i think you're i i know what even the, even the, with the amount of work you're doing i know what this takes and I know it takes a lot out of you. And I think the time you're spending doing this could be spent making, you know, I would say less videos of a higher quality and, and you'll see way better results. I hope that was helpful. Yeah. 
Yep, I agree. Quality I, over quantity on that one. I feel like I pointed out mostly stuff they're doing wrong. Should we? Is there anything else we could say that would push them in the right direction to for their next videos? Well, titling and thumbnails look good. I think more than anything is just planning ahead, because that that I think the issue here, from at least from what I'm seeing, it feels like there's a lack of a game plan. And that's one of the things where I always tell people, I know it's tough, especially when you're doing like a walkthrough or playthrough, stuff like that. But having a game plan ahead, having your title ahead, it sets the tone and sets the pace for what you're going to do. And it makes more sense to the viewer and it's more satisfying because you're giving them, you're giving them a reason to click and then you're paying off that reason in the video. So um, I'm hoping that they heard the advice about getting those titles ready ahead of time and having a game plan going into it. We've been, we've been talking about this for a long time. Dan's been talking about this for a long time. So um, make it, make it more valuable more than anything else. But I like what they're heading with the thumbnails and title strategy. It doesn't look out of place or out of time. It's not like messy in that sense. So they do have that going for them. It's mm -hmm. the content itself that needs to be tightened up. Yeah. So yeah, we wish you luck. I've, I, the reason I'm so passionate about this sort of thing is I've I've known creators exactly like you. I've I, some of my friends used to make content the same exact way you are, where you'll play one or two games like all the way through, and you'll you'll kind of see views exactly like this. It's like there is a little tiny audience for all these games that that will watch this type of content, and they'll be really supportive. They'll they'll say the nicest things like because they're actually genuinely enjoying themselves, but. When you come to vidIQ and you're like, hey, vidIQ, like I want to grow, I want to get bigger. Uh, we always have to point out like, this isn't it, unfortunately. The barrier to entry, we just talked about it. This is a very low barrier to entry. This is a, a game, you know, you're playing a game that everyone's heard of. You're playing a game that, you know, a lot of people have. And you're not doing anything in in terms of your your videos that makes it stand out. What, it, what extra are you bringing to the table for this community that loves this game? And that's where the speedrunners come in. They're doing something really incredible. They're beating the game at the fastest times they possibly can. And they're taking microseconds off every run, you know, and it's it's just really impressive to watch. Um, maybe there's mods out there. Maybe there's things you can do. But right now, it's just kind of a, a vanilla playthrough of the game. And there's just not, there's the barrier to entry is way too low. Yeah, I agree. All right. Next channel from the non-gaming forum this time. All right. Let's see what we got. 130. It is Motovlogs, another car centric channel, I think. Sounds familiar. Road Realty, actually. Okay. Oh, we have seen this guy before. This looks cool. a little familiar, yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at their latest video. Can we find mm -hmm. water and twisty roads? What is up, my dudes? And that one chick that keeps thumbing down my videos. What's happening, my friends? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. We got a fun one today. We're riding somewhere I've never been with somebody I have ridden with in the past. And let's see what bike he brought today. Let's see if we don't, yeah, we don't want to run into him. Yeah, we're going to get in the shade here. There he is. He's on the low rider. Low rider. 30 seconds. What are we thinking about the intro? I'm um, first of all, huge shout out for them to actually recording an intro while riding the bike. Normally I would, from what I've seen, it's usually been, um, uh, like a pre-recorded, like a voiceover while they're kind of showing B-roll of them doing it. So the fact that he's doing it on the spot to me is just like, all right, awesome. That's uh, yeah, let's, let's go. So, so far so good. And I like the the fact that he's telling us what's going to happen and what they're going to get into. So yeah, I mean, I'm so far, I like it. What do you think? I like it a lot. I think this was the right way to start one of these types of videos. Uh, you you said what's up in a funny way with a lot of energy, and I, I was a little bit taken aback that we're already on the motorcycle. Like like Jeff pointed out, you know, you're doing that while you're driving, which is you know awesome, dangerous. Be careful. Uh, and and then you said we're we're meeting somebody who we've ridden with before, and there they were. You didn't even cut, and like you know, perfect timing. They pull right up. Maybe you planned that. I don't know, but it was cool. Um, the 30 second mark, I think it was perfect. I think the first 30 seconds was ideal for what you would, what you want to see in this type of content. Um, it did. The music was slowing down. They're pulling up to a gas pump. Everything's slowing down. I want to watch another 30 seconds and kind of see 
do you edit the video to kind of keep this pace that you've set now or does the video slow down with you and and i i would hope that the pace keeps up but let's see yes that my friends is ironborn rider jason himself yeah right here get it in neutral yeah there we go nice let's ride but yeah, we're gonna ride over to deal with Ironborn Rider over here. Is he there? Is he on frame? I think that's him. That's him right there. Yeah. Got some nice back roads down there he's gonna show me. So this is awesome. Last minute planning it, it's fine. All right. So yeah, we didn't we didn't have to hang out with you while you, you know, bought gas and all that fun stuff. Uh, you know, you kind of went ahead. I, I would have liked to see um it looked like you were trying to mimic a Mr. Beast style thing here where like they, they did this like fist bump and they put this explosion sound effect in it, but it was so far off frame that to me, like right here, this constitutes like artificially zooming in on the two fists bumping together because it's like so, such an awkward place, you know, little things like that just to keep things moving along. Right. Um, I also feel like once we got to about a minute, I found you kind of re explaining what was going to be happening today. Um, it's redundant information. We don't really need it. It's 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 a little bit more context. You're saying now you're saying it's back roads that you haven't been on before. So we didn't get that from the intro, but do we need it? Like this is a, a moment where I'd be asking myself while I'm editing, like eh, I'm still not like we're, we haven't gotten into the content yet. We're still technically in the intro because we haven't gotten to like that that meat yet. So do we need to keep this in here? And I personally don't think you did. I, I think the next step is that transition from meeting up with your friend to getting to the location, you know, and getting to that midpoint of the video, getting to that meat. What do you think? Am I overthinking it, Jeff? No, not at all. No, and I completely agree. And that's something that I used to do. And, and it's tough because he's on the spot and he's on the bike and you can't have like, it's different from me where I can have the notes in front of me to keep me concise. So that's, that's kind of a tough part, but this is where editing comes in and where some of the stuff can be left out and you have to be comfortable with making those rough cuts, which from what I can tell he already is assuming he's doing his own editing. I think they already are. So it's just going to take a little bit more of that to, to kind of pull some of that out if it's not needed. Um, but aside from that, I mean, overall I'm, I'm very, I'm into it. Like I'm, I like how this is going so far. It's just, you know, controlling the pacing and the edit. That's really what it's going to come down to. But aside from that, so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I think this was really strong. Uh, <laughs> that was perfect timing. Not planned, but done with cuts too. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, that was in reference to the, the friend pulling up. One thing I would have also liked to see is uh, like when you said this is, I think you said Iron Rider or whatever their name was. Uh, like if they have a channel. I would have popped up their channel on the screen. Just that little banner of like channel name and subscriber count that you see when you go to somebody's like actual channel. Like, the, like you take a screenshot of just this right here and like that pops up on the screen. Even that or the whole channel if you want to. But um, that's if they have a channel. If not, then just their name just to kind of burn into people's brains, right? Like I know that character because if this is a recurring person like on your on your channel. Um, let's say there's a few people that you interact with all the time, like just getting, helping the audience get to know who they are. This is for the people who are going to keep coming back to watch your content over and over again. Like those little things where you, you superimpose their name onto the screen, uh, really helps with memory for your viewers. So I, I think again, we're, we're talking about incremental improvements you can make to your content just to get it to that even next level. And it's already at a fantastic point. I love the multiple angles. We didn't even talk about how many camera angles. Like you're, you know, you got a camera. They've got a camera. There's a camera that you're looking at. There's one on your head. Like there's just, for all I know, there's even more cameras that you've stuck all over your bike, <laughs> for for like creating a really cool show. And I like yeah. that. Yeah. No, absolutely, man. Let's take a look at their exit strategy. All right. So how do you get out of videos? What it looks like it's you riding. We got an end screen that pops up with a lot of options here. Let's take a listen. Two. Yep. There's a line in a movie somewhere. You're the dumbest smart guy I know. That that would be me. When I do something stupid, it just seems kind of natural. When I do a smart thing, it just sounds like I got lucky. Oh, we're doing the squiggly, 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 squiggly. I can do it too. All right, I'm done. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> yeah, it's you know you just got to know how to manhandle this big. <laughs> it takes practice. I don't have time to practice, so I just. I do it on the road and hope I don't wreck. 
Uh, okay, so they said that they're just bloopers recorded after the official outro. All right, cool. Now, that's that's totally fair, and you can totally run it run it that way if you want. Um, normally, what we try to get people to do, especially if you do an official outro, and this is where uh, Road Reality would have to go into your into your analytics. You'd have to go into your audience retention when you do the outro. If you're seeing a huge drop off, right? Then a lot of people aren't even making it to the bloopers, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, but if that's what's happening, then we have to rethink that exit strategy. Just like you're doing your intros, you got to start doing the outros. Like, don't let them know that it's ending. Don't do an outro. Your outro should consist of, hey, if you like this ride, here's another ride and keep it ambiguous enough, right? So like for myself, I'm not going to name a specific product that I'm going to send people to. I'm going to name a price. And I'm gonna say, hey, if you're interested in checking out a product that I love under 100 bucks, check out the video I'm gonna leave for you right up here on the screen. And that way I can change that end screen whenever I want, so long as it fits under that pricing category. So as long as it's something that they're gonna be interested in, you can send them to that. Um, but this is where you would definitely have to dig into your analytics and see um, what's happening when you say the outro. So basically like when you know, if my outro starts at 13 minutes and 12 seconds, Go to 13 minutes and 12 seconds on that chart and see if that's where the dip starts. And if that's where it starts, we have to rethink that exit strategy. So they usually do an outro mentioning the playlist on the screen, which is which is good. I would say that's a uh, a good way to do it. In this case, this is only our first exposure to your actual content here. But in this mm -hmm. case, I've seen four options, which is what I was going to advise against. Their yep. Ironborn Rider does have a YouTube channel, so that's good. Um, I would have definitely put them at the beginning uh, just to you know properly shut them out, keep people like aware of who's coming on your channel. Um, when you give people four different options like this, in reality, they can only click one. Otherwise, they have to open multiple tabs and make sure that they click all of them. They're not going to do that. No one's going to do that. So the playlist is a good idea because it is rides. If they watch this video, they'll probably like the other rides. That's cool. Um, this video doesn't seem like it belongs here. And because this is a special case of a guest in your channel, I can see why this is here. Um, I would only put two max, two options max, and that's already too many. But two options max in this case you would point to your friend's channel and you would point to the next thing you would like them to watch whether it's a playlist or whether it's just one video um and i would get rid of your subscribe call to action and i'd get rid of this one because even in this case they would only probably click one of these and chances are if they're going to click your friend's link they're probably already like a fan of you so that's like you know that's a shout out to your friend who joined you that day and i'd put them and i put that video and i'd still give that very clear call to action too um but yeah, uh, bloopers as well. I was going to say our editor now has started putting bloopers once in a while on our videos. Like if we if we screw up a whole bunch, Rob or myself. Um, and what we started doing was actually putting them before the outro. They just kind of get cut in there. Like suddenly you're watching a blooper and it's a, a little bit jarring at first, but it, it works. And then it comes back to us pointing to the next video. So we don't we give no warning that the video is ending. We just kind of like throw up the funny moments that happened and then say, by the way, uh, this video here is going to help you with this YouTube strategy or whatever. So just a few different things that you could consider. Um, nothing. You're not doing anything wrong. We're trying to optimize. We're trying to min max for you. That's all we're trying to do here. I think these are of a really great quality and I don't want anyone to take anything we just said and take it as like, oh, well, wow, they're really criticizing this guy's great videos. Like, no, we're, no. we're min maxing here. Yeah, no, no, for sure. And I, and I agree. Uh, two would be at most pointing and very specifically calling them out. But normally I like to remove choice from the equation. And that's from a lot of testing, a lot, a lot of testing that I've done with end screens and getting it down to one option and telling them exactly where to go has proven far more beneficial when it's a, spe a specific video that's relevant to the viewer way better. But for me, putting up a subscribe circle and a video, no one ever clicks a subscribe circle yeah, ever. So that's why I don't bother. If it doesn't make sense, why, why have it there? No one was clicking on the playlist links. So removed them, put a specific video, very, very specific to what it is. But I get in this instance, he has a channel. You want to put it up there doing him a solid, totally understand it. Um, another thing you can do if you want to consider this, instead of putting that there, you can always put a link to their channel as a pinned comment in your comment section. Another option. So just, just something to think about. But normally, I like to remove the choice. I give them one option. You either, either you go find a different video or you watch the one that I'm telling you to go watch. That's relevant to you. So, but those are, those are the options, but you have some options. Yeah. Um, and there you go. Less is more. That's, that's all we needed to say. <laughs> 
so road reality thank you so much for sharing what a great channel you've got this is awesome absolutely absolutely and, uh, man yeah really really high quality keep going um all right gaming channel time uh we'll go back into here just to double check we're over 400 now on the forms so Sheesh. i'll do how about this for everybody 420 <laughs> and uh 332 what the the gaming forum got up to 418 i'm just rounding up what's the, what why is everyone laughing 332 uh gosh everyone's so immature right especially me <laughs> now they post highlights and clips uh we'll see what kind of help we can offer in terms of video reviews here uh and it looks like they're primarily doing shorts yeah because they only have one yeah. long form video um okay so and it does seem like there's this person kind of reacting to them all right so why don't we check out this one got a thousand views let's check out this one Wamba's in the chat wamba wamba's in the chat wamba's in the chat oh my game crashed i don't know if the music is appropriate or not so i have to i have to mute it now i can hear him like wait a minute i don't know if this is music we can play um all right Let's go to the, another one. Let's see. Run, 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 run. She's here. She's here. Run. So they're taking stream clips and turning them to shorts. Sorry for how loud that was. Um, I think they're doing some things right, and I think they can improve on some things. Um, before I get into my tips, Jeff. Uh, you're making a face. Anything <laughs> feels like you have something to say. No, 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 not necessarily. I'm just uh, trying to figure out what exactly was happening here. Cause I wasn't sure if these are kind of like reactionary shorts or I'm just trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Maybe they're just doing a lot of experimentation. Um, that could be exactly what's happening, which is totally fine. Like, especially when you're doing shorts, experimentation is literally key to kind of, uh, to kind of keep things going. So, um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting, but, Let's let's uh let, I'll let Dan talk on this one. So uh, and a couple people are already seeing it. What I'm seeing, the text is hiding your reaction. Yeah. Um, and this is now this is one thing with desktop. I always feel like on desktop on shorts they they allow for maximum room for text, whereas on mobile it's a bit more compressed. Um, meaning like there's not as much covering you. However, even on mobile there'll be like that bar at the bottom. I would say the lower sixth of the screen is kind of unusable. You know, you don't want something important down there because there's a good chance, especially if you make your titles like you did, where you added all these hashtags, which don't do that on YouTube. I'll get to that in a second. Um, you know, you've made your title so long that it really, really covered your face here. So it really did make a lot of your screen unusable. So the solution to that, because you're not doing full on um, nine by 16 vertical shorts, um, you can make the video kind of square like you did, but put you on top of it. That's whenever I see people reacting to things and, and they have a face cam and like a gameplay clip stacked on top of each other's shorts, they always put themselves on top. And that gives you a lot more control over those facial reactions. And when you react to something, there was something scary in this one. And when you reacted to it, it was a great reaction and you should have zoomed in on your face. Your face should have suddenly taken up the majority of the screen of you going, ah, you know, that it's little things like that to keep the shorts audience kind of engaged. They're gonna, they're gonna come to this video and you know they they it, there's got to be a lot of cuts like when it comes to youtube shorts the attention span is low <laughs> i mean it's that's what youtube shorts and tiktok's all about just folks with low attention spans looking for a quick quick hit you know a quick fix of some content before they move on with their next task in the day so keep all of that in mind um context wise uh, i get that this is like a sh the shorts from your stream clips but there's not enough here to bring people in on YouTube who weren't there for the live stream. So what I would do is I would start your clips by basically saying the title out loud, right? Put some voiceover in after the fact. So the title of this is do not play this game at 3 a.m. So what I would have done, I would have kept that title and I would have recorded myself saying, this is why you don't play blank after 3 a.m. Blank being Thank the you. name of the game. Exactly. And then it gets into the clip. So so now you have the context. The viewer knows everything they need to know. And they didn't need to watch your live stream to know it. They You you told them, this is why you don't play blank at 3 a.m. And now they're expecting something. 
you know, and now they're going to watch the whole thing, in my opinion. So that's what was really missing. And it was missing from the last one as well, because you were just kind of like something funny happened and you were just telling people to put something in the chat. But it was I felt like I really needed to be there to appreciate whatever this moment was. And that's what we want to avoid in shorts. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to connect with the human, you know what I mean, as viewers. So, yeah, I got you, man. Yeah. Hashtags. Um, YouTube has had hashtags now for a very long time. They are clickable uh, in the case of descriptions and things like that on the title of your shorts, not so much. They launch into these, let's see, they launch into these um, pages, basically called pivot pages. And I don't have, I can't click on these. Um, so if you were to type in hashtag scary gaming, see this, this is a pivot page. There's 12,000 videos that have used the hashtag scary gaming across 3000 channels. Nobody uses these. Nope. Nobody searches YouTube via hashtags. And if they did, what would they find? It, they basically find videos in no particular order. You can see the views here are all over the place. We have one with 154,000 views before we can see one with 2.6K. So it's not even showing us the cream of the crop. Pivot pages are not something people search through. YouTube has not conditioned its audience to use hashtags in this way. One day that might change. And that's why you put a few hashtags in the description. You could put up to three before they don't show up underneath the video. Is that still true or did they change that? No, it's still, you still put three in the description and three will show up uh, above your title. But yeah, I agree. It's just not people. Well, firstly, shorts aren't even fed to you this way. You know what I mean? It's I one of those things where it's only if you see a short shelf on desktop where you can kind of see them and click them. But otherwise, when you click on a short, the next short pops up and the next short pops up. You're not you're not searching, you're not searching them out that way. It's just not the way that, that, uh, that shorts operate. You know what I mean? Like I'm not searching out shorts. I don't, I'm not saying people don't do that. Some people do do that, but, um, yeah, it's just not the way that it works. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't even sweat that. If you're going to keep using those hashtags, put them in the description, but you know, you don't have to overcrowd your title with a ton of hashtags. And I'm still trying to get regular video, non shorts creators to not use hashtags in their titles. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's stressful. But we went to our own live stream because I just wanted to show you what it looks like. I know we use them. So yeah. you can have up to three of these. If you could put 10 ta hashtags, if you want, only three will show up underneath the video. And we like to put ones that we feel like not a lot of people will use because it kind of it's it's one way to tie our videos together. But it, I don't think it does anything in terms of the YouTube algorithm. It's just literally an organizational tool at this point. And I don't think people really click on them or notice them. So no. TikTok, it's different. TikTok just works way different. And I think that's where the hashtag thing on shorts comes from but definitely not needed on youtube shorten your titles shorter titles are better if you're going to take your title and just jumble it with text people won't be able to focus on it won't be able to read it and they're just gonna they're, they're more likely to skip it and we saw what it did on that last channel it made their title so long it covered their face so yep. definitely uh on shorts it'll do that so definitely keep an eye on uh on that yep all right so that was a gaming channel we can look at a non gaming channel in a second because we do have some more super questions uh which we appreciate thank you so much for your super chat questions uh we will answer a couple more here before we move on one of them being hi i have been using google ads for views and also i got 62 subs in three weeks should i continue using google ads as a motivational channel they're so per they're a channel that makes motivational content yeah personally i say no i also say so, no yeah the best the best growth engine on YouTube is YouTube's recommendation engine itself. Yes. So some people want to throw money at the problem because they have money. If you feel that that's working for you, knock yourself out. If you're not getting engagement, if you're not getting people, it depends on the goal of the channel, obviously. But if you're not getting engagement from some of that stuff, it could be just because they're not quality viewers or not quality subscribers. That really yeah. is what it can come down to. Um, normally, no. If whenever we have students in, in Max that are doing this, we encourage them not to do this. So, I mean, if you just have the expendable income, then more power to you. But normally I'd say no, no. Organic is always going to be the best growth strategy for YouTube. Yep. Um, if you have a product or a service, uh, that's what Google Ads is for, honestly. The, it's there for people who literally want to put ads on videos for products and services. But Correct. If, mm -hmm. if you are generating views from ads, you're think about where these show up right so i see like 
a person who's like ripped in your in your avatar. So in your profile picture there. So let's say let, let's just assume you're a motivational channel in the sense that you motivate people to work out, right? People who work out watch a lot of different types of videos though. They're not always watching videos about working out. But sometimes they do. And so Google is like, "Hey, sometimes this person does searches for fitness products and and content. Your ad will show to them, but at a time where they're probably trying to watch a trailer for the next Marvel movie or they're trying to just watch some gameplay videos. They're just trying to relax." So YouTube is basically taking a viewer who's made a decision to watch a different type of video and forcing them to watch like five seconds of your video. And it gives you a view and it feels good to see those numbers go up, but you've you've bought views that way and it didn't equate to somebody clicking on your video and like watching your channel. All they did was get interrupted. They wanted to watch something else and you made them watch something that you did first. So they're, they're hovering over the skip ad button. They skip your video and then they watch what they intended to watch in the first place. So be mindful of that. There's a reason that big brands do this and not small creators because brands like Coke, for example, put that logo in front of you over and over and over again, everywhere you go. So the next time you're thirsty, you think about drinking a Coke, but YouTube videos and creators, it's not the same thing, you know, and uh, that's that's really the reality of it. Yeah, and they also don't count towards your watch hours. Exactly. Yeah, you can't get monetized by buying the views that way. Unfortunately, it's a, yeah. it's a, if you want a legitimate way to buy views, that'll do it. But it's not going to grow your audience, and you'll you know it, you could have spent that time and money taking steps to improve your content and grow that audience organically. Yep. Uh, we have a couple questions from this person. Uh, they said one of them is, is it a good idea to put a sub animation in the middle of a climax, like a jump scare or something like that? Yeah. I answered them in the chat. Oh, but, sorry. Uh, no, no, no. It's totally fine. I actually answered both of their questions in chat, but it's, it's totally fine. Cause I'll, I'll, we'll bring it up here for everybody else. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't do that because you're going to be pulling them out of whatever's happening in that moment, right? And secondly, if they want to subscribe, they're going to subscribe from the value or the entertainment that they're getting out of your video, not because they saw some fancy animation logo. And I get people pay for these animations that say subscribe and stuff and you want to use them. Don't. Right. <laughs> return them. Yes. Go back to the YouTube animation <laughs> store and return those. We've been we've been not asking people to subscribe in our videos, and Same. we've been getting more subscribers. It, it's why put that in our script? Like the focus is on the value of the content. We've started saying it at the end again as a test, but honestly, like I won't say it in the middle of a video. It just doesn't. And once you hit a million subscribers, I mean, do you really need more? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, weird flex, sir. <laughs> Any suggestion on where to put the sub animation? So uh, if, if in case, I guess this was the answer to your answer, right? You answered their first question and they said, well, where should I put it? If, if, <clears throat> if you must do it, yeah, I would do it in the first third of the video. If you absolutely have to personally, I wouldn't bother. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we like to tell people put it in after you've given some value. You know, yeah, that's the most literally. tempting time. It's once you've said something funny, once you've shown them something that's going to be helpful to them, uh, that's the best time to do it. Like in terms of like having the best chances for them to click. It's good yeah. to remind people, like if your goal <laughs> is to get subscribers, which a lot of us still it it is, um, it's it's great to remind people because people genuinely do forget that they can do that. Maybe because they're subscribed to some channels and not others. But every, I wouldn't do it every video. Yeah, I would, I, you know, I would start easing off that instead of ask for likes, like, you know, likes are an engagement tool and YouTube is that's just one of the ways YouTube measures the satisfaction of a video. So, you know, that's a more valuable thing they are going to create watch sessions, they'll be subscribing before you know it, you won't have to ask. Yeah, and how you ask is also important. So contextually, if if you're giving them value, then it can make a lot of sense to do it. Like, you know, if you've already given them a tip on value, whatever it is, and you could say something like, Hey, and if you're interested in more videos about how to chop wood correctly, you know, make sure you hit that subscribe button and keep it going, like throw it in very simply, very quickly. And as like a one liner as like, Hey, if you like the way that I, you know, polish the wheels on this car, hit that subscribe button so you can catch all my videos and then just keep going. Don't make a big thing out of it. Just, just sneak it in there really quick and then keep it moving. Um, because if you make it like a whole thing, people are just going to skip it. So, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, look here. Someone just reminded folks to hit the like button, and we just jumped up like 100 likes. Hey. Look at that. We're approaching the number of concurrent viewers in the live stream. Like this. <laughs> uh, so there we go. All right. That's, that's our spiel. We're going to get back to selecting channels here. What was the last one we did? Uh, it was a gaming last channel. Last one, gaming channel. Yes. So 423 now. We've, we've now once again needed to update the claw. 201. 201. Thank you for submitting your channels, by the way. There's way too many. We won't get to all of them. But maybe most of them. Not most of them. All One right. Name. It's, it's the Shankinator. <laughs> I'd be worried about the Shankinator if I was in prison. That's why I'd be worried about the Shankinator. I'm worried about the Shankinator in all contexts. <laughs> right? Golf. Uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Shopping. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Um, I want to click on a video here that is a representation of what you normally do on YouTube, but we're all over the place. If we were doing channel arts, we would tell you about all the ways in which you could improve uh, the focus of your channel. But you you probably saw channel audits yesterday. So, and if you didn't, you should go watch. Um, let's let's watch Restaurant Rage Two. Okay, so it's kind of arranged like a, a Lego stop motion TV show. The volume's getting louder and louder on me. Okay, so that was the intro. Uh, 23 seconds. I think in terms of like <laughs> funny intro, you know, it, like I, I like that you did that. You know, each character had like a name and who voiced them or, you know, controlled them. Maybe. I, I don't know. We haven't gotten very far into it, but I do feel like that was very long. Uh, it's, it was, it took a while to get to the point where we're hearing sound effects and we're getting into the actual story. Uh, that would have been a good credit scene. Like I would do that at the end so that we can get straight into the content. Cause people, again, attention spans are fickle. Uh, but let's watch a little bit more. Like, sir. All right, it's so about forty-two seconds in. Um, what are you thinking? Uh, no, just I was chuckling at the way that they got out of the car. Like that to me was hilarious. <laughs> but yeah. um, no, but I agree. It's this is one of those things where what works for a movie or a TV show it, that doesn't translate very well on YouTube most of the time. So because you have to think about retention, right? We have to think about can we get to this a lot quicker? So um, that's just one of the things where I would be more careful about that hook. I know what they're going for. Like we can see what they're going for and they're trying to make that work. Um, I would probably save that for if you ever decide you want to make like an epic one. Like if you do like an epic video every like once a month or once every three months, save it for that kind of a thing. Um, but outside of that, just get into it as quickly as you can. But what do you think? I completely agree. There, there was the intro that took quite a bit of time. And then uh, I do feel as though just getting to the point where they're like sitting in the restaurant. And and here's my other problem too, just as a sidebar. I already know what's going to happen because of the intro. Like someone's going to burst through this window. I'm going to mute it for a second. I did not know there was going to be a snake. <laughs> yeah, they got me with that one. Plot twist. And uh, the other thing that was missing for me was the sound design. And this is, again, if we're talking about incremental improvements, this is not something that I expect you to just, you know, break your back doing for your very next video. But as you continue to look to improve your content, uh, we can talk about camera quality and lighting and things like that, which are going to be something you need to continue to practice. Um, there were sound effects at the beginning, and I thought it was going to be very sound rich at that point because we heard all the, the street noise, which was a bit loud. Um, but still, still good, a nice touch. And then when they pulled up and they got out, it went completely silent. And that, that's where we need more. We need more sound effects of, of them, like talking amongst themselves, a little bit of sound effects of the car door opening, the restaurant door opening, things like that. There's a, like a lot you can do to, you know, improve the, the, the 
immersion of the content to keep people feeling like they're in this world now. They're in then they're in this world you created. Um, incremental improvements. This is all everything I'm saying adds to the time it takes to make these. It's stop motion. It already takes a painful amount of time to make these, um, but it it definitely increases the quality. It's it's what separates you from other stop motion channels that are not doing this. Correct. Yeah. 100%, man. And one thing I did want to also mention to them as a quickly useful thing that we saw when we we're back on their page with the videos is that their latest video is their channel trailer. Um, your channel trailer should be unlisted. And it should be unlisted. And then when you go to customize channel, you can have it appear at the, you see on the homepage how there's a video that appears there. You can have that channel trailer appear there. That's where it should be, but it should be unlisted. There shouldn't be a video that I find on your channel as like your latest upload. So that should be for somebody. If I click on your homepage, you give me an intro cool but aside from that it shouldn't be a video that gets that you push out as a you know with notifications out to your viewers it's there are if they're already watching your content they don't need an intro trailer um but just something to keep in mind for anybody here that decides they want to make a channel intro or a trailer for their channel set it as unlisted and then put it on your home page mm -hmm. so this is a really strong start i would say for a lego stop motion channel you got 41 subscribers a lot of your videos are getting more views than subscribers all of this is really good it's it's proof that what you're doing there is an audience for that the work mm -hmm. you're doing is paying off. Um, so I would definitely continue, uh, but I would also continue to just make those incremental improvements. Um, and I would be taking channels that are at the top of their game in this space, the Lego stop motion storytelling space. And I'd be looking at what they're doing and then studying it. I don't want you to look at them and go, gosh, I want a million subscribers. I want you to look at their content and break it down and try and think like, why does their video look the way it does? And what can I do to make my video look like that? And and try to pick apart like little things that, that you could just do right now to improve the quality of your content. And maybe there's some stuff that you're like, oh my goodness, like their camera quality is so good, but I cannot afford to do that right now. That's okay. What else can you do? Like maybe you notice their sound design is really, really good. Maybe you notice that their stop motion is even smoother than yours. And you're like, ah, oh, how do you do that? So now you're looking up tutorials about stop motion techniques. Oh you know, and, and like ways in which you can, you know, speed that up to, to speed up your process and then speed up the the motion of the characters. There's, there's so much room for improvement here and you're already doing a really good job. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's something where looking at those top channels is exactly what I did for myself, even though I couldn't match them because I couldn't afford, you know, red cameras like Marquez or, or Ari Alexa's like Jonathan Morrison. What I was looking at was what angles were they using? how what did the background look like where were the locations were they doing b-roll outdoors indoors how does the video sound you know and start kind of or how are they telling the story how are they getting into the video these are things that don't cost you money they do cost you time but they don't cost you money so you can get in and start learning some of those techniques you can look up oh what's this how do i do that how do i get you start finding the tutorials you can learn how to do youtube on youtube um but yeah and then lastly shout out for continuing to use the yellow heads a lot of people don't use the yellowhead uh, minifigures anymore. So huge shout out to the yellowheads. Thank you everybody for hanging out for another video review live stream. We're back on Tuesday with channel audits and Wednesday with more video reviews. These start at 2 p.m. Eastern every uh, every Tuesday and Wednesday. So yeah, and don't forget we got a ton of videos on the YouTube channel. A lot of helpful information that you guys could be picking up. So I, I know it's it's your time, but please check out some of those videos because we drop some awesome knowledge in there. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next time.